Hello, it's Sarah, and welcome back to step two of creating this little pendant artwork of our own. I just took you through how to create the design for the little guy, and here it is, and we're going to now um, finish it off by soldering two pieces of glass together to create a little pendant. So what I'm using is microscope slides, and I got these on um, Amazon. I'm going to take two out of the box and these have been these are uh, 72 pieces and they've been ground on the edges they're 90 degree corners and they're plain because I, I bought some at Hobby Lobby and they had um, white here I guess so that you could write on the slide but you want to make sure that they're all plain and I also signed my name on the back and you're just going to sandwich your artwork between the two pieces of glass. I've already cut it down to one by three and this is pretty thick watercolor paper so just give it a let me see if I can actually get this a little flatter I think it bowed on me a little just makes it easier to tape because we're going to tape it together using copper foil tape and this is made specifically for uh, stained glass. This one is quarter inch. Oops, this one is 732 uh, copper foil tape. And it's got a sticky back side. But this is what the solder will adhere to. And you also need flux. I'll show you that in a second. So we're going to take this and I think I shared this in a previous video, but basically make sure your slides are as snug as you can get them start your foil and you're gonna center it on the in the middle of the foil so it has equal sides equal equal sides folding up I don't know if I can shoot this uh, for me to be able to see what I'm doing and you to be able to see what I'm doing so I'm gonna do it my way first so what I mean is there should be half on that side and half on that side so that when you fold it up and keep, make sure you're nice and snug you're going to go around the whole thing just try to keep it centered as best you can I mean I'm not I'm not perfect trust me and because you can you can uh, trim it if you need to I'll show you. Keep going all the way around. Kind of stick it down as you go. And I'm going to take this all the way to the end. Uh, I probably shouldn't. I probably should have started at the end. I saw one video because I've only been, I'm new to this, so I've only seen, I've only done it this many times <laughs> as many times as I have uh, pendants but uh, one of the people I saw doing it on YouTube said she likes to start and end her tape at the bottom and there probably is a reason for that I haven't figured that out yet so now I have my tape on but it's not folded so I just start I push down in the middle on both sides and work my way up and you're gonna kind of um, miter the edges I guess it's called so slide it up and miter the edge we'll do the same thing on this side slide it up and then miter the edge and the same on this side so now you've created and I love the color of the copper foil I have another video I'm going to make because you can change the color if you want this to be uh, I have, I think I have a black and a copper color um, polish that you can polish your solder with, or and so I'll I'll do, make another video of that. So now it's all together. It's a pendant. You're going to use your bone folder, or I happen to have this fancy tool because this was I started doing this before I ever paper crafted. I never had a bone folder before. So I had this before I had a bone folder, and it's just to get your copper foil nicely just gently uh, burnish that down 
to the glass and this looks like my I want to fold it up although it won't make a difference we're gonna put solder on top of it so go along the top all right make sure it looks like there's no bumps or dings and it looks even so now what I mean by that is if I overlapped when I folded it up let's see where that is I can't even tell oh here it is here's where I joined the uh, this is the end of the tape if it was overlapped I could cut it with my exacto blade I just take my exacto blade and make it look even but that looks pretty even I have to say I've done a pretty decent job you can really see it on the back this is a little narrower up here but for the most part it looks pretty good and I use the quarter inch um, tape and probably the 732 which I think is a little smaller than a quarter inch would have come off because you're gonna lose a tiny bit of your design my phone's ringing uh, I'm gonna all right you're gonna lose a tiny bit of the design on such a small piece you know it's hard all right so this is ready now to be soldered so what I need I have my soldering iron and mine is by Weller and this is big enough to do a piece of stained glass and I use this big solder but I think in the craft one that I got from um, Michaels it came with a little piece of solder and I could I could probably demo that at another time but I'm gonna use this today this is lead free solder I also have a salamoniac block this is what I use to clean my soldering iron oh I'm still zoomed in I'm so sorry I'm sorry all right and then I did just get I also have this um, what is it called the name comes in and out of my brain but this is to uh, I'm gonna turn on my soldering iron too I'm gonna put it up to around a seven rheostat I'm pretty sure it's called a rheostat I plugged my soldering iron into the rheostat and then this is plugged into the um, into my like plug but so you can tell the soldering irons on the light goes on so I'll let that heat up and then I also have this little just got this thank you Linda uh, smoke absorber and it has a, a carbon filter in there and that is going to absorb the fumes because the salamoniac block definitely makes fumes we won't do too much today because this is just a very tiny piece of uh, of work that we're working on but if you were working on a big uh, you know whole big piece of stained glass uh, you really want to work in a ventilated area or definitely have um, some ventilation or this uh, smoke absorber here um, so I also have these clamps for working with jewelry and I am danger girl so I would go in here with my hands and it will get very hot but definitely these clamps work great so I'm going to clamp this and work that way and I will turn the piece as I go and use it like that I like to work it I'll probably do some because we're just tinning this we don't need to run a bead or anything um, and then I need to create this little uh, bail I guess you would call it I'm gonna attach a piece of 20 gauge wire this is just silver wire you can get this in the beading department at Michaels and I'll show you how we make that I'm gonna need my little oh, where did I put them oh, right here <laughs> my round nose pliers and we're gonna do two of those so the first thing and then we also need flux flux is I have uh, liquid flux and gel flux but this is what makes the solder adhere to the um, copper foil so let me see if my soldering iron is hot let me turn on my make sure my wires aren't all crossed here literally everything's kinda there we go it's not too loud um, 
And then I, I did say my uh, lead-free solder. I got this at uh, Hobby Lobby, and it's thirty dollars, guys. It's no, it's not cheap. But it, if you're doing a fairly decent sized piece of stained glass, it, it goes fast. Like so, I used my 6040. I just ran out of that, so this is all I have right now, which is great. That's fine. Um, all right. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put some solder along this tape and get it all sealed up. So first, I'm gonna flux. I'm going to do two sides at once. So I make sure the flux goes on the side and the top. Let me see if I have solder. It's not hot enough yet. Oh, it's starting to because I just saw a little bit of smoke come off that. So I'm just rubbing it on the Salomoniac black and it really gets it nice and shiny so I can pick up a bead of solder. I'm going to zoom in. I don't want to go too far because I always forget that I'm zoomed in. And uh, Alright, we're ready to go. So I just have my solder right here. I'm going to touch it. I, you need a tiny bit. And just move slowly. And that basically, it went down the side too. I could, I could tell I had enough solder on there. What am I going to do? I still have solder on the tip of my iron. So I can, I'm just pulling it along. And tinning that copper tape. And that's it. Gently change positions. I really don't want to... I didn't want to put it on there until it was definitely dry. Make sure you flux again. The solder won't stick if you don't flux. Touch the top, the solder a little bit, and then just go. The solder will flow down. Um, gravity will. See, I still have plenty of solder on my iron just for tinning. So make sure your hands are not in the where the solder could fall because it will fall and it will hit you and you will be burned so I'm done I am done tinning the, the piece so we'll take it off I'm just going to turn this off while I talk I'll clean it up I'm just going to take a baby wipe and just clean the flux off it's a little hot but not too bad Just kind of look at it. I see a little copper here, but I don't mind that. Uh, it seems to have stayed ad adhered. So now we're going to create the little loops that I was telling you that this is how I attach my bale. There's a little loop on there. And I'm going to do one for the top and one for the bottom. So that on the top you put your bale and the bottom we're going to hang a little charm. So you take this 20, 20 gauge wire and I'm just going to start, let me zoom I'm gonna zoom in as best I can so you guys can really see what I'm doing. These are kind of small. I have a bigger um, round nose plier too. There's, there's different gauges I guess. Like if you look at this See how small this is? And this is much wider. I just like using the little one for this because I really want this hold. All this has to fit is a jump ring through it. So you're going to start about like that far down the wire and just bend it in half.
and make a loop so that you have a little tail I gotta see which side cuts and this is what you want to end up with and that's even a little big I think I'm gonna if I use a And just pull it. I can make my hole a little smaller. Now you want to make those two ends straight because that's going to sit on top of your pendant. This is going to sit on top of here like that. So you see what I'm doing? I'm going to solder that on to the top, right to here, so that it'll be like that. Then you take a jump ring, which I don't have one. Oh, yes I do. See this jump ring? This will go through that and it creates the bail for you to put your pendant. So you could just solder on this this um, jump ring right to the to the top of that but I feel like having these little wings on the loop really gives it a little more strength so I need to make another one of them because we're going to put one on the top and one on the bottom so let's see if I can again I'm not going I want this to stay small so I'm just going to go up like that I can't make it small today for some reason. And I have a cutter inside the bottom of this, so that's what I'm looking for. And I just cut it. And you just want to make sure your wings, I call them, are perpendicular to each other, that they're straight. So that's really all you need is two of those. One for the top and one for the bottom. And you know, one's a little bit longer than the other. That's okay. Uh, but you really do want them to be as straight as possible because if it sticks up at all it'll it shows so have it curved down if anything all right so I got one two and we're gonna solder those on and to do that you're just gonna again use your little clamp This is the bottom first. And this has to be uh, vertical, I guess, or what am I trying to say? Um, let me think. Do I want to do it this way? Yeah. So I like to hold my, I'm looking for my needle nose plier that I use for soldering. Here it is. Because this is my jewelry needle nose plier, and I don't want to get it. See, this is all burned up and like fluxed and everything. So I don't want to mess up my other one. So I'm going to use this needle nose plier and hold it by the loop with my left hand. And I'm going to practice first. Ugh, I'm a little too zoomed in. I want you guys to be able to see this, but it's not it's not practical the way I'm filming with the camera above. It's going to be hard to see, but I have to keep it like this to make sure everything's straight. So I'm going to do my best, guys, and I'm going to hold it by the loop. You got to flux, put flux on top and flux the little piece of wire. And then I'm going to take my soldering iron and just all I need is a little bit of solder. and touch it down and now it adheres it and I don't know how much of that you can actually see and I'm doing the same thing on this side and I'm going to do another and just fill out the bead on top like flatten it out so it's all even and that looks great 
I want it to be, um, by even I mean like the same thickness of solder. So there it is. And we'll do the same thing on the other side. Try to, uh huh. It's a little tricky when I just want to make sure that's dry. I don't want to clamp on the hot solder. These are so cute, you guys. Oh, this side. So again, I'm going to hold this. Flux the top and flux the wire and you just need a tiny bit of solder and just lock it down with the one side first so you put it in place try not to shake and just tap it and that locks it down then you're going to do the same thing to the other side and just fill it out with uh, a little bit of more of a bead looking solder because that's the top of my pendant I want that to look decent right sometimes you have to reflux and or else it'll look yucky this looks oh look what happened all right this is good good teaching moment I got it hot and the solder melted and my beat my uh, thing flipped forward so we're just going to reheat it and take it off and start again. I hate when that happens because you know what in this case you don't want that to happen so I mean you don't it's going to happen but you don't want it to happen because what happens is the tape you don't want your tape to be heat it up too much. You really don't want to heat your tape up too much because it'll get loose and it'll, you know, so I'm going to try and fix this. So it, it looks a little rough there. I mean, I'm not loving that, but I think I'm just going to go for it again. We're going to put this on here, flux everything again. We're going to do this. Oh, I got to make another one of the, ouch, that was a little hot. There was hot solder in there. I got to make another uh, loop. But yeah, you can um, remelt the solder, so you have to get in and out. You can't just keep your hot tool right on that solder because it's going to melt it again. So I'm glad that happened in a way because it can show you, you know, it happens. It's not the end of the world. I'm just making sure my little uh, wings, I call them. Making sure my wings are straight. And we're going to go in and do it again. So I have another loop ready to go. Flux, flux. And just a tiny bit of solder on the tip of my iron. tap it down and do the same thing on this side now if I want to fix anything just run it along quickly run it along oh it moved damn it it's all right though it's still straightish need flux. See, because that's already ha has, let's see, I'm going to clean my tip a little bit. There we go. Alright, it's a little bit crooked. Oops, and this. Good. Alright, let me zoom up. 
and show you what I got here. So, it tipped a tiny bit. I'll try to show you. I'm just getting the flux off here. If you look, you can see it's tipped, but I can bend that. Now, you, again, it's just the tape. You don't want to, but that, that wire is so um, soft and, and, and light, I can bend it. So let's just make my, uh, put the bail on. And there you go guys. Pendant I got I'm gonna just add I have these little charms. I like to put these made with love charms. I have a little key. I'm pretty sure I got these at Michael's. Maybe Hobby Lobby. Joann's. All the stores around have these. I'm pretty sure they're bead landing. And I have some jump rings. And I like to use kind of like a medium sized jump ring. I'm running out of jump rings too. I, I think I would prefer something a little bit smaller than this, but it's what I have. And just open it. You open jump rings sideways. Don't pull it apart. And put the lock. It says made with love and a key. And put that on the bottom. And close your jump ring. And there you go. Super cute. I love it. I hope that was helpful. Listen, I just go for it. Don't be afraid to try. Be careful. You know, like this solder is dry now, but when I went to pick it up, it was still hot. <laughs> and I do think that the, um, I'm going to go grab mine. This is the um, Walnut Hollow. This was the verse. This is the Versa tool, and I do think that you could do a little pendant with the Versa tool. It comes with this little solder right here. You know what? I'm gonna do one. I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna do it with the Versa tool. So I'll be back. I'm gonna wrap one of these guys up and make make another pendant. But look how cute! See, this is the one we just did because I stickles the butterfly and I made my birdie a little redder I love it and then I signed my name and it's a little work of art pendant alright you guys thanks for watching